Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again with a quick video about a topic that I wanted to create some discussion about in regards to Ubuntu. And specifically, I want to talk about LTS releases or long-term supported releases. As most of you know, Ubuntu has two different type of distribution releases. They have the LTS releases that I just mentioned, which happen every two years and are supported for somewhere in the neighborhood of five years, depending on the release. Some are only three. Um, Ubuntu itself is supported for five years. And supported means that they get security updates for that amount of time. It doesn't mean that you can expect all the new features. It just means that it's going to be kept alive and supported for that amount of time at least. And then they have the regular releases of Ubuntu, which are actually supported for just nine months. So your security updates will actually cease after nine months. And the question comes up, should I use LTS or use a non-LTS standard release? And almost always the answer is to use LTS because it's long-term. I mean, why would you use anything else? But, you know, historically it's been really hard to stay on LTS. And the reason why is because the packages, you know, don't age well and people generally want the new features. They don't really want to stay on an operating system that is stuck with old applications. They generally want their computer to be moving forward. Is that still the case today though? Or is this concept still important? Is there any reason today in today's day and age to use anything but LTS? So let's go ahead and talk about that. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers and their cloud manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, or Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. So the line between LTS and non-LTS is blurring more and more each year. I've been using Ubuntu off and on throughout the years. There's been some times where I'd switch to another distro and use that, but I've at least always kept up to date with Ubuntu on the features and, and what's happening and, and what's being offered. And anytime I was using an LTS release of Ubuntu, I'd tell myself, you know, I'm gonna stay on LTS. There's just no reason to sacrifice um, years of support to go with something that's only gonna be supported for a short period of time. There's just no reason to do that. And then what happens is the applications that are on the LTS release that I have installed, they uh, generally um, you know, get really old and then I want the latest version of something, find out that there's no, re no way to get it. And then I find myself upgrading to a non-LTS release and this cycle has continued. I just say, I'm gonna stay on LTS and then I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna move until the next LTS. And then something happens and I actually move. Lately though, I've been on LTS longer than I've been able to last before. And you know, I just was starting to think, why is it? Is it really important now? Um, do we still have the same problems that would make us want to use anything but LTS? And I've come to the conclusion that there's very little reason to use a non-LTS distribution. And I got into this discussion in the Pop! OS chat room Pop! OS makes an LTS release available based on Ubuntu because they are based on Ubuntu and they also do standard releases as well. Um, you know, but first of all, I want to mention that the standard releases are always going to be important because it's important for developers because the Ubuntu developers themselves are preparing for the next LTS. So they have to keep things going in order to build what will eventually be, in, the, in this case, Ubuntu 2004 and the year 2020, so just next year. Um, around this time next year, it'll be released. And that's what the uh, Ubuntu developers are building toward right now. And it's important because the work that they're doing is going to be in that release. But it just seems like more and more, there's fewer new features that are worth upgrading for. And now that the, it's the case that the newer kernels and driver stacks from the current non-LTS are later backported to LTS, really makes me venture to say that if you're an end user and not a developer, 
there just isn't any reason to use non-LTS, in my opinion. I'm sure you're, you might disagree, and that's totally fine. But one of the reasons for that is the last few Ubuntu releases that are non-LTS, so the, the, pre, the previous one, we had 18.10, and the one that's coming, we have 19.04. Neither of them have features that are worth upgrading for if you take into consideration that you're sacrificing years of support. So if I'm going to give up a five-year supported release, what I'm replacing it with better have some new features that I just can't live without, that just change the way I use the machine. Maybe not even that dramatic, just a bunch of smaller features would be great. But the only thing to really look forward to is the newer GNOME. And there's performance increases that you can have. There's fractional scaling. There's a new theme. The new theme doesn't factor in with Ubuntu if you're using the standard Ubuntu releases. They use their own theme anyway, so you won't even see that unless you manually switch the theme back to the default. So you're not even going to notice that new feature at all. So that only leaves you with the performance increase in the fractional scaling. Now, fractional scaling might make a difference for some of you guys. If you have a 4K display, this might be the reason why you upgrade to 1904 when that comes out. But if that's not you, there's just no reason to upgrade to it. Yes, you'll get kernel 5.0, I believe. You'll get a much newer kernel. That's true. But then when Ubuntu 1804.3 comes out, you'll have that same kernel from 1904 backported to your 1804 release. So yeah, while getting a new kernel is a great new feature, I mean, that's just not a reason to upgrade because you'll still get it anyway in 1804. And then when it comes to GNOME, there's no diehard, or there's no extreme features that you absolutely need to have. In my opinion, I look at the release notes for the upcoming release and I just don't see that there's any reason to do that. But the final nail in the coffin for this for me is the concept of universal packages. We have snap packages, flat packs, app images, and that solves a very big problem. That is the reason why I always end up switching off of LTS to a more current release. And that's because an application I want to run Maybe I want to run it at a newer version. I'll never understand why Ubuntu makes this decision. But in LTS, for example, I'll just use LibreOffice as an example, you'll never get a new version. For the entire five-year cycle, you will be on the same version of LibreOffice the entire time. It doesn't matter if you get updates, you'll get security updates. You won't get feature updates, though. So LibreOffice will be locked at 6.0. And then other applications you use, maybe Caden Live or others, um, may not get updated either. If you're lucky, you get a PPA that has a newer version in there, so you can you know, sideload that. But PPAs are a problem because what if the developer stops supporting it? Then what? Then you have a stale PPA on your system. And that's not a good situation to be in either. But then Universal Packages, they solve this because they give you a way to install newer packages. I can have the latest LibreOffice on 1804 without using a PPA. I am using an app image right now. It's working great. And for me, that just means that there's just no reason for non-LTS releases of Ubuntu to even exist. I sometimes wonder if non-LTS should be rolling, then LTS should be non-rolling in much the same way we have Debian stable and Debian testing. And then on my YouTube channel, people will comment, should I use LTS or should I not? And friends will ask me the same question. I just have to say, use LTS. There's just no reason not to. And the more that we get into the um, aspect of universal packages and the more that matures, I just feel like there's less and less reason to use anything but LTS when it comes to Ubuntu. So what do you guys think? Do you have any feature or anything at all that drives you to install a non-LTS version of Ubuntu? Let me know in the comments. I'd be very interested to hear what you guys think and what you guys feel about this, if there's any reasons that um, you, know, you might have to not be on LTS because I'm just you know, curious about additional mindsets here. And maybe you'll agree with my opinion or maybe you won't. Let's have some open discussion on whether or not it's still relevant in 2019 to use something other than an LTS long-term supported release of Ubuntu for those of you that do use Ubuntu. So, with that said, I look forward to reading your comments. And I should have more videos uploaded very soon, some really exciting videos coming soon. So, stay tuned for those, and I will see you again real soon. Thank you so much for watching my video. 
you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.